Peace be with you. I'm Eddie, your host. Welcome to The Dean Show. Exciting, exciting. It's that time of the week that you get to put everything off and sit down and enjoy The Dean Show. Another exciting show. My next guest, 10 years he spent investigating, researching, because at a young age he started searching for the truth. Yes, and he saw the inconsistencies, the contradictions in the way of life that he was living, that he was brought up in, and it just didn't fit, didn't make sense. And then he found this dean, and he tried hard. He didn't want to believe that it was the truth. He didn't. But now he's here on the Dean Show today, today because he found out that it really is. And we really want to benefit from his story. And I'm sure you do too. So don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back with Brent here on the Dean Show. Don't go anywhere. This is the Dean, the Dean This is the Dean, the Dean This is the Dean Show. 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 Welcome back to the Dean Show. Peace be with you. How are you? Assalamu alaikum. Very well, thank you. How are you? Good, good. Thank God. How's everything, Brent? It's very good. Very good. Good to have you on the Dean Show. It's a pleasure to be here. Now, uh, I, I opened up the show and I just gave them a little bit of a taste test. I talked about you 10 years at a young age. You know, many young men, they're really not searching for the truth, but you were. Uh, what really inspired you at a young age to really start this journey? Well, I... I've been kind of fascinated with like religion and faith and like existence and being for like most of my adult life and uh, just from a very young age like I just you know I would read like the Bible or read the you know the Gospels or the parts of the New Testament and it just didn't make sense with what my grandparents or my parents were telling me and it just there was just so many questions I had and not enough answers and so I spent like the better part of 10 years or so just, you know, researching like, you know, Buddhism and, you know, I would, you know, read about, you know, Confucianism or like different parts of Christianity or Catholicism or, and I finally stumbled upon Islam and it just, you know, I, I have friends that were Muslim, that were, you know, Persian and they just, you know, would say, oh, well, you know, we can certainly help you in this journey and they would give me books to read and I it just kept reading and reading and reading and reading and it just started making more and more and more sense and you know I guess it's just kind of culminated in you know where I am right now so I've been you know I guess unofficially practicing for a few years now just uh, didn't uh, take shahada until earlier this year so unofficially but officially you started to you ended up taking the shahada you mm -hmm. ended up uh, accepting this way of life how long ago uh, end of January, beginning of February. Very recently. Yeah, very huh? recently, yeah. Yeah, so it's really new to you now still. But but yeah. you, you mm -hmm. have a lot, 10 years, you were studying Islam unofficially. You, you would consider right. I mean, yourself during, Muslim? Unofficially, yeah. I mean, I like I, I fasted during, I've been fasting for Ramadan for the last, like, probably five years. I, you, you know, dietary restrictions, I've always held those. And I've, you know, I, I, I've just, I, I've greatly admired the way of life and I greatly admired like the discipline and the, and the, you know, the, the love in the, that I feel when I, like I'm around other Muslims. So it's just, you know, that last step that I didn't want to take or not even didn't want to, I just didn't feel like I was like emotionally or, you know, mature or like, like spiritually mature enough to like take the next step. And finally I just said, you know what, I don't think that really matters at this point. It's yeah. just kind of the right thing to do. So I just went ahead and finally took the step. Did something that a life-changing experience, a near-death experience, because many people are just caught up with life and, you know, the uh, <clears throat> guy's just cruising down L.A. with a dog on his lap, listening to Tupac bling bling, and he's just, you know, uh, he's not thinking about truth, searching for the truth, money, that's all that's on the mind, right? Right. Uh, it's kind of uh, really surprising when you see someone that's excited about really wanting to know the purpose of life, like you were seeking to know. What, did something happen? Well, the culmination of a couple of things. I was in the military for 10 years, well, nearly 10 years, and uh, just seeing what I saw while deployed and doing, you know, meeting different people and just seeing, like, people under, like, you know, the most extreme hardships and, like, just, 
under you know the, this this tyrannical rule and and like just with, without running water and no food and like no schools like no basic human necessities but they still clung to their faith you know like very very strongly clung to their faith and you know I was it just amazed me I was like that's incredible like I've never met anyone like this I've, and it wasn't just like an isolated incident it wasn't just like meeting one guy who just happened to be very pious it was like categorically like almost ubiquitous that every person I would meet would, was just like well you know we don't have running water and I can't send my kids to school but you know thank God I have you know like food to feed my family this evening and or thank God I have like this small thing or that small thing and it just it made me wonder like you know that kind of faith like that's something you know I want to <laughs> I want some of that you know I want to get involved in that and uh, that's kind of what like really made me sit down and like start questioning like okay this is something that I really want to like look into or that I really want to you know think about and then about two years ago well not about a year and a half ago I guess um, I lost my son uh, to SID sudden infant death syndrome and the experience of just being in with him in the hospital and kind of watching him you know, fade away, it just, it really showed me how fragile life is and how, like, very precious it is. And it just made me just kind of take a step back and say, like, I really need to get myself straight. <laughs> so. Yeah. How long ago was this? Uh, October 14th, 2013, he passed. Recently. How old yeah. was he? Two months old. Two months old. Yeah. yeah may, may God Almighty Allah uh, reunite you with your son. Inshallah. In, in Jannah. Um, so, tell us, this is amazing because you'll see a lot of people complain about not having enough jeans, shoes in the closet, <laughs> <laughs> right? Don't have the latest iPhone and right. the gadgets. But you're saying you're seeing people at the other end of the spectrum of the world and they don't have running water. Right. But they're saying, thank God. Yeah, thank God that, you know, I have, like, a pair of sandals. You know, thank God that, like, I have something to keep me out of the sun. And there was one instance, I, uh, w the unit that I was in was in charge of detainees and uh, some of which were like, you know, probably very dangerous people, but others were persons of interest. <clears throat> and I ended up having to guard one said person of interest. And the only thing they were allowed to have was a bottle of water, a Quran and, uh, you know, very basic food and just watching, you know, the faith that he maintained through that, like, and, and knowing that, like, that's kind of how, you know, under even those extreme conditions that he could still maintain that level of commitment and dedication, it just, it made me really kind of step back and question a lot of things. We're, we're going to go back, we're going to go back a little bit and forward to get to where you are today on this exciting treat of a story. It's Ramadan. Now, officially, you were fat, but this is like your first... Yeah, for, uh, real. for real. For <laughs> real, <laughs> Ramadan. So it's a treat brought to you here by the Dean Show. Don't go anywhere with this exciting story. We'll be right back. There are many similarities between the historical reference of Christianity and Islam. Many people are amazed to find out that according to Muslim belief, Jesus is one of the greatest messengers of God. One cannot be a Muslim without believing the virgin birth and the many miracles of Jesus Christ. Jesus is also mentioned in many verses of the Quran and is often used as an example of good virtue and character. However, the main difference between Christianity and Islam is that the Muslims do not believe that Jesus was God. Please subscribe to The Dean Show. Follow us on our official Facebook and Twitter pages in the links below. Please also help support The Dean Show by making a donation in the link below. Back here on The Dean Show with Brett and we're talking about your story. So people out there, they can, you know, there's a lot of misconceptions. You know, people right now, some people might be tuning in. Maybe they're fat. Lot, Islam is the fast, according to the Guinness Book of World Records, it's the fastest growing way of life in the world. It makes sense. And people are coming to Islam because they're investigating it. They're seeing that it makes sense. And when you started to investigate it, did you see past a lot of the false media hype propaganda? And yeah. did it make sense? It does. Um, you just, you can't really believe what you hear in the media. It just, anything to make a headline. And you know, that, I, <clears throat> I've never really been invested in, you know, what's being spoon fed. So I just, you know, I've always been kind of the person to research it myself and, you know, find out the truth for myself. And that's really what I did. I mean, ever since, you know, the unfortunate events that happened in 2001, you know, Islam, unfortunately, has been this boogeyman where, you know, that's, 
and it's portrayed that way in the media. And it just, I never really am one to take things at face value. So I, you know, I said, well, let me see what this is all about. Let me see what, you know, is really going on here. Like, why are people so afraid? Why, why all this, you know, concern and whatever? So I, you know, just obviously started to read like the Quran and started to read just, you know, different books, different like histories, different, just different things. And um, I just very quickly realized that, you know, not only is the media wrong, but they're like completely off the target, you know, they're completely off the mark. And I just thought that was, you know, very fascinating seeing how completely wrong everything was and, st you know, slowly but surely starting to like learn the truth and learn how it really is and how like how much, just how peaceful the religion is and how wonderful the community is. And it just, it was life changing. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Tell us, when we go back, you mentioned you were brought up in a Protestant family. Yep. And you saw many of the inconsistencies you had mentioned, the contradictions. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by that? Uh, well, like, there's just something about the Trinity, especially, that always bothered me. Like, I just didn't... I guess the biggest thing is, like, the, the, like thinking about God, thinking about Allah. It's, I think it's lost on a lot of people, like, what is meant when you say that. It's, it's, it's the creator of the cosmos. This is the creator of the universe. And that's, that's incredible. That's enormous. And that's so much space. You know, that's a lot. And I feel, I just felt like that was like kind of just flippantly like thrown about, like talked about and without any like reverence or respect. And it's like, why would the creator of the cosmos have a son? You know, it just didn't make sense to me. Or like, why would, you know, the creator of the entire world, the creator of the universe, like, like he's not like, there's only one, you know, why would there why is there like uh, you know a father, a son, and a Holy Spirit? You know, there's there's one God. You know, that's well to me anyway, and that's you know kind of what I tried to find out is like why they thought this way and why they felt this way, and it just it just didn't make sense to me. And you know, in Islam, it was you know made very clear that you know there's there's one God. There's nothing equal to God. God has no son, no equal, and that just that just made sense to me. That seemed very logical. So. How about this part where the belief that someone, Jesus, who we love and revere as one of the greatest messengers that was sent, calling people not to worship him, obviously, calling people to worship the creator, God Almighty. Right. But now people say, look, that he died, that he was crucified. Out of his love, God sent him to die for your sins. This is another mm. basic belief. What did you think about this? I just didn't believe it. You know, I just, I mean, it just, it just seemed very inconsistent with, with the rest of the belief system, you know, if, if you're going to equate God with Jesus and you think Jesus is God, but he's also the Holy Spirit and the, like the, a God in three persons. And, you know, I'm not as eloquent as most people and I can't explain it as well as, you know, other scholars may be able to, but it just, it just didn't make sense. Like if, if, if you're going to tell me God had a son, why would he let that son die? You know, and it, it just didn't, I just didn't feel like that was something that an almighty and all-powerful God, you know, would do. And, you know, I just think about, like, what Islam teaches about Jesus and, you know, how, you know, he was such a wise man and a great prophet and, like, this, you know, I mean, the, the, the way he taught, the, through his, the, the actions that he did, the things we can know about him, like, historically and the things that we know about him from, like, the Quran and, and the Injil, it's just, like, the complete revolutionary fervor and, like, the, the amazing person that he was, I just feel like is, like, completely lost on mainstream Christianity, you know? Mm -hmm. So you really did your homework. I mean, 10 years. You're yeah. So you did go back mm -hmm. to the Protestant, also uh, ba Baptist. Mm -hmm. You looked at the different denominations. Well, I was born as a Baptist, and, you know, I, I you know, researched all manner and form of the Protestant faith, you know, from... You know, Baptists, uh, I mean, Unitarian, it's not, you know, necessarily Baptist, but it's still a Protestant faith, you know, and uh, just different kinds of, or different manner and form of, of, of Protestantism or that, that branch of, you know, Christianity. And it just, you know, it just, it just didn't make any, it just didn't make sense. You know, it just so many inconsistencies and so many, like, contradictions and, you know, just, it just didn't speak to me the way that Islam did. Like, Islam encourages you to ask questions it encourages you to, to to think and be critical and and not only does it do that but it also tells you like okay well that's that's great let's if you have a question let's talk about that let's figure it out let's sit down and think about why you think this and you know we'll we'll figure it out and i think that's beautiful i think that's amazing that like 
not only is questions encouraged, but it's like, you know, that's, that's, it's a great dialogue to have. Let's, let's figure it out. Let's make things better for everyone, you know, instead of like, well, it's this way because that's the way it's always been and that's the way it is, you know. Yeah, many people don't know we have actually more in common mm -hmm. and we never try to bash on Christianity right. or anything, but Islam calls us to reason. Let's right. have a dialogue, a nice yeah, conversation. Like back and forth. Back and forth. And when people see, like, you know, many people don't know that we can go to the hellfire if we don't believe and love Jesus. Right, right. But he never said he was God. Right. Exactly. Did you ever see that in any version of the Bible that you no. read that he clearly said, I am God, worship me. If you don't believe in me, you're going to the hellfire. No. You don't find it. You that. don't find it. Yeah. No. But when we ask Christians, we say, do you believe he was God? And many, many of them, because it's in their nature now to reject mm. a human being being his God. When you ask them, do you believe he was God or sent by God? They'll say, I believe he was sent by God. Well, that's what we believe. That's what we believe. He was a messenger <laughs> sent by God, calling right. you to worship God. And that's amazing. We're going to be right back with more of this incredible story here in the Dean Show. Don't go anywhere. So, qul huwa Allahu ahad. Say he, Allah is one. God is one. The maker of mankind. Exactly. Allah who summed it. Allah is self-sufficient. He doesn't need food or drink. He doesn't need to rest on the seventh day. Okay, I really had a problem with that even before I knew anything about Islam. God resting sounds like a weak God. Yeah. Um, Lam yalid wa lam yulad. He begets not. He doesn't have any children, nor is he a child or born of anything or anyone. Wa lam yakullahu kufuwan ahad. And there is nothing co-equal or comparable unto him at all. Nobody. Nothing. Jesus. Not anything we can no, imagine. Nobody. Nobody's comparable to the Creator. Nothing. Yeah. And that right there was in its essence what I believe naturally. Please subscribe to The Dean Show. Follow us on our official Facebook and Twitter pages in the links below. Please also help support The Dean Show by making a donation in the link below. Back here on The Dean Show with Brett, a 10-year journey now, and finally you decided. What, so there was a point that you didn't want to believe that Islam was the truth? Yeah, I didn't want to believe it, I guess. There was, I mean, there was, you know, I was a rebellious young man like, every young man is and there was a, a time in my life where I was like you know not an atheist but I just I didn't I just didn't want to believe in anything you know I, I just I got so frustrated with like trying to find you know commonality or you know truth or you know just answers and finally like there was some point like maybe 22 23 I just said you know what I don't believe any of it <laughs> like I just don't think any of this is right and you know, there for you know a couple of years. That's just kind of the way I, I went about it. I just got so overwhelmed and so frustrated that, like, the the atmosphere I was in, I didn't really have people to talk to. I didn't really have you know friends or uh, acquaintances or you know family that knew about anything other than you know like either Christianity or you know whatever it was they believed. So I didn't have any kind of any kind of reference point, you know, so I just got really kind of down and kind of lost track of what the purpose of all this research was for in the first place, I guess. Mm -hmm. But I quickly kind of grew out of that and decided, you know, it's, there's much more, much, much, much more to life than like this nihilistic kind of, you know, there is no purpose sort of thinking. Yeah, more of a hedonistic, just fulfill your pleasures. Right. And desires but at the end of the day you're, there's still a void right and was there a void there with you oh, absolutely it's it's nothing felt fulfilling and I like no matter what I would do I just there was never that there was always that emptiness that you that you felt like just something in my life was missing something and I couldn't you know I, I guess maybe I didn't want to admit that it was God that I didn't want to admit that like that's what my life was missing and you know I would fill it with all manner of things you know like I would drink, I would party, I would go out with my friends, I would, you know, just stupid stuff, you know, materialistic, worldly things. And at the end of the day, I'd wake up the next day and I would just, you know, I'd feel terrible and like I'd regret it or I'd just still feel like the emptiness inside and not, just not being fulfilled. And it just seemed like no matter how much I would read or no matter who I talked to, I just didn't feel like I was whole until I really started to dig into Islam. 
I call it the lotto ticket syndrome. <laughs> yeah. People end up scratching the lotto ticket because why they think life, then I'll finally have purpose. I'll make it and hit it, I'll hit it big and then I'll finally make it. Or the people just experiment and they'll just go ahead and win championships, Nobel Peace Prize, or the person wants a position at work or get this man, get this woman, get this car, get this iPhone and finally I'll, I'll be happy. Right. But it's like scratch a lotto ticket. Many people, when they, maybe they do hit it one out of uh, a million, a million. Their, their life just gets more flipped upside down. Or the person gets to the next level right. and they still find out that, you know what, it's not it. This is not yeah. where, where it is. Now, do you feel it where, do. you're where you need to be in life? Is that void filled? Well, it is in a lot of ways, but, you know, it's, it's just it's an ongoing thing, you know. Yes. I mean, I feel like it's, you know, like it's just something I, I need to work on every day. You know, it's not that like, OK, I converted. I, you know, pray every day and I, you know, fast during Ramadan and I you know, hold the tenants. So now I'm fulfilled and now everything's fantastic. But, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, life is what it is and yes. things are hard and, you know, you have tr you know, troubles and, you know, difficulties, but, you know, Allah and my belief gives me strength and gives me hope and it, it leaves me fulfilled. It leaves me feeling like there, there is hope, that there is fulfillment, that there is, you know, something there at the end of the day when I come home and like it's been a terrible day and I just feel depressed or sad or lonely or whatever, you know, just any number of things. I, I, I can just, that feeling to know that like, that's in, that Islam is in my life, just recharges my batteries every day, you know, and it helps me face every new day and every new challenge. That's what it is, a recharge with the prayer, the salat and all the other things that we do out of God Almighty's divine wisdom, He prescribed the things that we need to do to recharge the heart. And now we reach this blessed month of Ramadan. It's really a recharge of our of our iman for the whole year. But that's the thing, what you just said. It's like two people will be on a ship and they'll go through the thunderstorms and the waves high, but one has the Creator with them, one doesn't. Right. But they're still going through the trials and tribulations. But when you have the Creator with you, at the end there's light at the end of the tunnel. Right. It just makes it much easier to to face life. I mean, it's this is the hardest thing you'll ever do. This is categorically the most difficult thing any of us will ever do. Yeah. And if you, I think Islam, you know, I look at it like like it's my tools. You know, it's you you wouldn't like I was in the military. You wouldn't go into battle without a weapon, and that's that's my dean. You know, it's going into each day with arming myself with what I need to, you know, face the world as it were. Yeah, and it's just like. Um you know, anything, you, you, now you have that blueprint for life, right. definitely, and uh, people can relate to that. It's a constant struggle to be upon a path of nobility, righteousness. Uh, do you see now how Islam, I've definitely experienced that. I know where I was before, and I see how Islam definitely is that medicine for the heart. It helps to improve your character, relations with your family, uh, gives you the reference point. You go back to it when you're making a mistake. To, right check yourself, get in line, do what's right. Do you, you see that? Yeah, without, without a doubt. I mean, so many times I just, you know, I get caught up in, you know, the day-to-day -day and, like, it's, just, it's easy to lose track. It's easy to let your mind wander or, like, just get caught up in, you know, work and, you know, your friends and relationships. And it's just, I, I am categorically a better person since, you know, coming to Islam and, and deciding to live this way of life, you know, I, I'm healthier, I'm happier, I have better, more fulfilling relationships. It's just, it, it just makes me feel more complete. And, you know, when I do have a bad day or when I do, when something bad does happen or, you know, I feel sad or lonely, I mean, it just, it's, it's there, you know, it's, there's always, you know, that, you know, return point. And like, especially the, you know, praying, it's, it's so meditative and so like just peaceful and I just feel like it's it's just very respectful and very just calming and it helps yes. like center me and like bring me back to what's really important in my life you know mm -hmm. my you know god and and my faith and that's that's ultimately all, the only thing that really matters and yes. it helps bring me back to that you know it's ironic. I mean, you you have a lot of uh, people with strange ideas, and the media is not helping this. And then you also have some Muslims. We have to take accountability who don't have the proper education in Islam. They do things, and now 
obviously doesn't represent Islam, but the media just loves focusing on them. They yeah. love, you know, it's imagine the media focusing on a fringe element like the KKK, and that's right. all the people got to see. But that's what they do now with these groups like ISIS and whoever else is out there and constantly just bombarding the American people. So for the people who just watched Fox News and they see you and they say, oh man, this guy now, he's one of them. I'm an American, I love my country, you're an American, you served your country. I served my country with, you know, with honor and I, you know, to those kind of, to those people that say that or to think that, it's, you know, I mean, the proof is where it is. I mean, like, I love my country, I love living here, I just happen to be Muslim. You know, it's, I'm a sol I was a soldier, I served, you know, two different tours in Iraq honorably with some of the best men and women that I've ever met and I just, I, you know, you see these portrayals of, you know, Islam in the media or not even, I don't even think it's Islam, you know, you see like ISIS and you know, Al-Qaeda and, you know, just those kinds of people and that becomes like a reference point for people or of like the representation of the whole faith, but of course that's not it, of course not. I mean, you, you, know, we, you don't look at the KKK and say, oh, all Christians are like bigots and, you know, small-minded, of course not. So why would you do that to Islam, you know? But it's it's just it's easy for the media to make it out to be like this boogeyman, you know. Yes. And you know, it, it's my I feel like it's like my responsibility, you know, especially being you know a veteran, especially being like new to the faith, you know, to 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 be a positive, you know, force to be, you know, a positive representation of that to say like, you know, Islam is a you know it's a peaceful religion, it's a beautiful religion, it's you know it's a, a wonderful religion, and to be part of that. And to, to, you know, bring it together with, like, every other aspect of my life, just, I think it just shows that, like, you know, each of these different things aren't mutually exclusive. You know, you can't, it's not like you, if you're a veteran, you can't be Muslim, or if you're a Muslim, you can't be a veteran, or you can't be American and a Muslim. It's, 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 it's part of the way of life. I mean, that's the beauty of America, you know? Yeah. Well, I really, we're out of time. I really have enjoyed talking with you. I benefited tremendously from your story. I'm sure the viewers have also. Thank you very much. And we started with peace. We talked about loving Jesus as a mighty messenger. Uh, we talked about and, and the peace that he brought, calling people uh, on it was Islam. It's peacefully submitting to the one who created you. And now you're a Muslim who's doing that action. And we'll also end with that greeting that Jesus greeted his followers with peace be with you. And also with you. <laughs> Salam alaikum. So, and there you had it, another very wonderful story with Brett. Somebody drives a Toyota or a Honda. You don't call him a trader now because he's driving a good car. He switched over from maybe a Chevy. That's his choice. So this person decided to do what Jesus did, put his head on the ground, praying to God Almighty alone. Jesus never, as he found out, ever called. We love Jesus. Go to the hellfire if we don't believe in him. But... He never called anyone to worship himself as a god, nor did he ever say that he was a literal son of God. What does that mean? Cats have kittens, dogs have puppies, cows have calves. What does God have? Baby God? Come on, man, you know that just doesn't make sense, and there's no proof for it. But Jesus was a mighty messenger who called people to submit themselves to the creator of the heavens and earth. He was a Muslim. That's right. And our brother here found this way of life that just makes common sense. Worshiping the Creator, not the creation. Doing good. Being good to your neighbor. Being the best that you can be. But you go through struggles. And it reminds me of a beautiful hadith where the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, has said that no affliction befalls a believer except that it's good for him. Even the prick of a thorn, you get rewarded for it. You're patient and it's good for you. So when good comes to you, say, thank God, alhamdulillah. And when a calamity strikes, you're patient, alhamdulillah. And at the end, there's the reward of Jannah. So there's light at the end of the tunnel. And there was someone, and I'll conclude with this, that said that I dare someone to find anything better than driving through L.A. with their dog on their lap, listening to Tupac. Well, this person hasn't figured out life, nor the purpose of life. And this brother has, because when you do, that's when your heart becomes alive. It's charged up, and you finally have that peace and contentment that money can't buy. And you then, you don't need to be scratching those lotto tickets or having the lotto ticket syndrome. You finally got it. You finally won. 
I hope you enjoyed this week's show. Have a blessed Ramadan. Subscribe if you haven't already to The Dean Show. Call us if you have any questions, criticisms, you want to chat, 1-800-662-ISLAM. We'll see you next time. Until then, peace be with you. Please subscribe to The Dean Show. Follow us on our official Facebook and Twitter pages in the links below. Please also help support The Dean Show by making a donation in the link below.